Hello everyone, this video is going to be kind of a follow-up to my previous posts and videos where I've been showing off this fancy Text Mesh Pro logo. So what I thought I was going to do in this video is actually show you how I created this uh, Text Mesh Pro logo. So the reason I want to do this is too often people see these fancy looking uh, graphics or titles that are created with Text Mesh Pro and they think, oh wait, this must be like baked in or something or maybe it's some fancy geometry with a bazillion vertices and triangles and so on and so forth. And as a matter of fact, what you're actually looking at is just a plain text object uh, with a bunch of material properties being tweaked on it to give it this look. So if we look at the geometry, this is still basically per letter two triangles or a quad and so from a performance point of view, this is no more performance intensive than Unity's plain text mesh. So even though the text looks fancy, um, there is no real performance impact to that. It's just one of the main advantages of Text Mesh Pro's advanced text rendering uh, technology. So if I was to zoom into the text, you'll also see that the text looks clean and sharp uh, at any zoom factor, point size, or resolution. So let's get going on seeing how we created this. So the first thing I'm going to do is dial everything back to the way it was uh, to begin with. So I'm going to change the shader on the caption text to just the normal mobile uh, sign distance field. My cursor is off screen, but that's what I did. And I switched to an unlit shader. As you can see, the text is like totally white now. And I'm going to do the same thing on the Text Mesh Pro logo. And a quick way of doing that is I'm just going to go back and reselect the basic font uh, that was used to create a logo and I'll switch back to the normal uh, sign distance field shader right here which is also unlit. So again if I was to zoom into my text we can still sh see that the edges are still super sharp and nice and it looks good but right now it's just a plain logo and I'll go one step further I'm actually going to delete everything and we'll retype the logo to see how I got it to look the way it was. So the logo is like text mesh pro. Uh, obviously we had some colors and the pro was like in superscript so we're going to go superscript for the pro and we will close out the superscript. Uh, we're going to give it a color. So the color was this. So it's got a 3x pair, red, green, blue. And although this is the last uh, part of the text, I don't need to close out the color, but I'll still do it anyway. And let me add the exclamation point. Now the T and the M were actually larger sizes, so we're going to use the size tag. So we're going to go size equal, I could go plus a size, so plus 12, let me uh, go on the other side of the T and change that. So now we can see that the T is larger than the rest, and basically the plus 12 means our base font size or point size is 48, so this one turns out to be 60. Um, so I could also define an absolute value like 60, which gives us what we add, or I could define it as a percentage, like 125% of what we had, which turns out to be 60 also. The percentage is nice because as you change um, the size of the font, it remains proportional. Whereas if I use an absolute, if I was to scale the font to 72, well, eventually the T would become smaller than the base type or the base point size. If I use a plus, it's sort of a similar thing where proportionally it would get not as big as using the percentage. Hopefully you get my meaning. So I'm going to use size, percentage, 125 also for the letter M. And we're going to say we want it to end here. So now we've recreated the style of the Text Mesh Pro logo. Now the next step is to make it look fancier and add the glow and all the rest of this stuff. So first thing we're going to do is go back to our caption and we're going to switch to the surface shader. So right now we're using an unlit shader, which means scene lighting does not affect the text. So we're going to switch to the mobile uh, surface shader. Uh, again, my cursor is off screen, but that's what I did. And as you can see, the text suddenly, there's a blue light here, there's another blue light here, but there's an orange one up here, and the text is not as blue. It's kind of affected by the orange color here. So if I was to go and pick uh, this blue light, for example, and you can actually see the shadow now being cast by the text on the ground, but if I was to move in, you can see how 
you know, the lighting does affect the text, but not the top one because it's using still an unlit shader. And you can see the shadow moving. Hopefully in the YouTube video it's going to come across and you'll see it nicely. So our light's back where we want it. Now we're going to switch our focus back to the top logo. We're going to switch again to the surface shader. And now we can see how the text is actually being affected by the scene lighting. Um, now it's time to style it. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we get to see what's going on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dilate uh, a little bit our font. Um, and that basically means I want to make it a little bit thicker. So, and you can see I can make it thinner or thicker here. So I'm going to go to 0 0.2, a nice little round value. Uh, we'll add some gloss, which we can't see yet because we didn't uh, add any beveling or anything, but it will show through afterwards. Uh, thickness, uh, we want to sort of make, uh, add an outline, uh, which is what the thickness here, it's the outline thickness. So now we have a nice outline here. Um, same thing, I'm going to throw my gloss on there. Now in terms of beveling, um, the panel is expanded here, so we're going to, well, first let's change the color uh, let's texture actually our outline so we can see uh, what we're doing here. So I'm going to pick uh, something like this right here. And we can't see it yet because the outline color is black. So we'll switch to a white color. And now we can begin to see it. So I'm going to bump up. Uh, base we can see now it's flat. And now we're getting sort of a, a bevel style or look to it. We're going to add some uh, offset or actually change the width of this so we can see it a little bit better uh, like so maybe about close to here now some of these um, different dials you know depending on where your lights are and, and the, the, the style of the font you're gonna have to play with this to get a look that you're you know actually pleased with and something that you're looking for um, so let's here add some roundness makes it like a little bit rounder now our specular light, we're going to bump that up. And you can see now we're getting some specular highlights as I bump this up. So the orange light that's over here is now shining right there. And the blue one is like shining on the inside here. As a matter of fact, if I go pick this orange light, uh, where's the one I picked? Actually, I picked the logo. So if I pick the orange light and move it around, we can see how now it's actually affecting our text again. Okay, let's go now and uh, the surface, let's add a texture. So I'll go back to my logo and we'll add a nice texture on the face of our text, which looks nicer now. Now this looks kind of flat-ish, um, you know, it looks kind of cool, but, um, and in terms of bevel, right now I'm using an outer bevel, but I could switch to an inner bevel and you can see how now it's like beveled on the inside. Again, we're trying to recreate the logo, so I'll stick with what we had. So now let's go here and add some uh, bump mapping. Now let me close this out here and pick a nice bump map. Now we've got way too much, so let's uh, dial this out. So as you can see, I can control the amount of bump mapping we're applying either to the edge or the outline or on the face of the text. So I'm going to add just a little bit you know, I don't want to make it too porous looking, although it's kind of cool if I was to go back and grab the orange light um, and move it around. You can see how now, because we have the bump map, how the lighting's really making the text come alive. Although it's not alive, but you get the meaning. Um, so let's go back. That's cool enough in terms of bump mapping. Now we're going to throw in our missing piece, which is our glow. Uh, right now it's green, so I can control the offset of my glow, which is basically where it sits. Like I could put it on the inside of the text, right, to create some other cool looking stuff. Or, in this case, I want it just on the outside like so. I obviously don't want it green, it was kind of orangey, like this. And I want to make the outer kind of fuzzy and the inner is kind of fine the way it is. And now you can see that we went from a plain, 
you know, white looking text with no styling on it. And we created this fancy, you know, looking style. And I had a user today actually ask this question, which is, well, if I go through the process of making all these cool looks, how do I preserve them? Do I duplicate the font asset? What do I do? And I basically said, well, there's a trick. See, all we did really is we took the base uh, banger SDF font material or font asset. And this font asset was created with the built-in font asset creator that's part of TextMesh Pro. And when you create the first font, I will actually hit reset. It basically looks like this when you create it. And all we did is we moved all these sliders around. And if I hit undo, after we move these sliders around and assign textures, we got this cool look. Well, there is a context menu. If I right click on my material here, there's a context menu that allows me to duplicate the material. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to duplicate the font asset, which con contains, you know, information about the font. It contains the glyph data, the kerning table, and all this different stuff. All we're interested in, because that, the, the banger SDF that contains all that information, we only need that once. And then from that single one, we can then create a bunch of other materials, like a thousand of them if we want to, to give it all kinds of different looks. So once you create a duplicate material, which I'm going to do now, the new material gets automatically assigned to the object, and it basically shows up here, which is now called Bangers SDF. So I'm going to rename it, and I'll call it version 2. And just so we can see, I'm going to change the color to a cool kind of bluish color, okay? So now I've got, and, and again, to make it clearer, I'll call it blue glow, okay? So here you can see I have another material. So we've got the blue glow we just created, and then I've got another one here that's got the orange. If I was to take this material and drag it on top of it, you can see that I can assign these new materials dynamically to my object. So uh, let me not drag the same one over again. So blue and now the orange one. So I can have a thousand or a bazillion material presets and dynamically assign them via script or drag and drop onto the object. So one single font asset with TextMesh Pro works for all point sizes at all resolutions. And then from there, you create a bunch of material presets to give them all these different looks. So again, that was basically what I wanted to show, uh, just to reinforce again how all of this is dynamic. You know, I can go back and now type all, whoops, dynamic, and I can, you know, change character spacing, Whoops, I typed the D twice, not, not so good there. Uh, but we can change all these things dynamically, change the alignment, left, center, right, and so on and so forth. So this is all like normal text. It just looks fancier because we have all these different material properties assigned to it. So hopefully, let me hit undo a bunch of times and go back to what we had. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. That's what I wanted to show all of you guys. If you have any and gals, if you have any comments or suggestions or feedback, please uh, feel free to post. Uh, thank you for watching.